This video is on cross chord reflexes, cross chord concept. It's a concept that when you Google it, you don't find much about, but it's a clinical term. Whenever therapists are working with clients and we use both sides of the body and we use the arms and the legs in a synchronized way, for example, with running or Nordic walking or doing ISO clamps, we talk about cross cord exercises, which makes use of so-called cross cord reflexes. Now in this short video, I'm explaining what the term cross cord reflexes mean. It's basically a basket full of mechanisms that are at play all at once. The main component is the spinal cord. And the spinal cord, for most of you don't know, but it doesn't end at, the, at your sacrum, but it ends sort of halfway down your back. And then we have like a corda, we call it the, the horse tail, the corda equina, that goes to, to the lumbar and the sacral levels of the lower, lower foot. So and then we have all these spinal nerves that come out of the vertebral column in between the nerves. This is the back. These are the spinal nerves that, that come out here. So this is one third vertebra, this is the second. And this nurse, if this is L1, lumbar 1 and 2, this goes to the hip and the, the upper leg uh, area, for example. This is the spinous process that you can feel under your skin. So, uh, and then we have, we have the uh, brainstem, we have the cerebellum, and we have the two hemispheres. Let's draw them here for convenience. Left, right, this is very important, the bridge between the two hemispheres. So cross cord reflexes, what are they? Well, mainly they are reflexes in, across, across the cord. So across the cord, so they are interspinal uh, reflexes. So they, they occur in the spinal cord. So they are across, they go from left to right. So if we have an arm here and we have a leg, leg here, they are in between the two arms, they are in between the two legs, they are on the same side, they are diagonal, so they facilitate crawling, walking, creeping, uh, everything that, that requires organized movement between the limbs. We have reflexes built into the spinal cord. And that is one, and one of the biggest, crossed cord reflexes. But cross the cord, we often also say when we are crossing the midline with a movement where we cross the midline, we go from the control of one side to the other side and we if or if we alter, alternate these these movements from from left to right we start activating one side then we activate the other side and inhibit the other side so we're constantly uh, excitation inhibition excitation inhibition all at the same time in a wide area around area where you activate the movement. This is also helping the crossed cord reflexes. So this activity at a brain level, at a higher at a hemispheric level, also helps the crossed cord activity between the limbs, just as the reflexes and control from the reticular uh, spinal areas play a very important role in the up and down regulation while you are walking, for example, or also when you are swimming. So the term cross-court reflex is a 
gathering term of especially spinal cord reflexes, reflexes that exist in the spinal cord at the lower level. This is also where the development of the brain starts and that you go back to can rely on when the brain falls away, for example, through a stroke. We have the reticular spinal areas that are under influence also of the higher cortical centers. Everything that happens here has a component to the pontomedullary reticular formation, the medulla, the lowest part of the brainstem, the pons, the mid part, and the, the mesencephalon, where we have the rurospinal tracts that go to the mid part of your limbs. Uh, and then we have the corticospinal tract from, from the frontal uh, lobe and the interaction between the parietal and the frontal lobe parietal where the, all the sensory information comes from. But the term cross cord reflex means inter intraspinal cord reflexes that help the limbs to work together. We have the reticulospinal up and down regulation of, of muscle tone which has a higher cortical component as well, where the cerebellum also plays, plays a big role as a coordinator and integrator. Uh, and we have the crossed, the midline activity, interhemispheric, cross-colossal, pericolossal activity between the left and the right brain that help all these activities between the limbs to fine-tune, coordinate, initiate uh, the initiation finds place here, the automated control takes place here, and the automated control takes place at the brainstem level. So it's a collection of terms, that's why you don't hear it very often, crossed cord reflexes. It's crossed movements across the cord, meaning in the spinal cord we have reflexes built in, but it is also the higher control that combined with the spinal cord reflexes. I hope that's not too confusing. See you in the next video. And I'm sure we're going to make more videos on this because this is also uh, with the control over specificity very important information that you can use to get better rehabilitation, get movements built into the rep uh, uh, rehabilitation, for example, to prime all the activities that you are doing where we couple everything up, we couple the limbs to the specific brain parts that control the limbs. This is probably one of the most powerful concepts, this combination that we have in stroke rehabilitation.